Hola, Marcus. Hola, Miguel. Hola, everyone. <laughs> Guten Morgen. Good morning. So um, hey. let's 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 talk today about migration token for applications and how architects use it. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Miguel Perez Colino. I'm product manager for migration token for applications, and with me is uh, Marcus, who has been doing some migrations in the field. Would would you please explain to to introduce you introduce yourself to us and explain what you do? Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. Um, as Miguel uh, said, my name is Marcus Nagel. Uh, I work with the uh, um, with the EMEA solutions practice. Uh, uh, so I'm a services guy. I've been implementing a, a, a huge number of uh, applic uh, application migration uh, projects uh, from things like uh, web logic onto, um, uh, onto EAP standalone. Uh, from WebSphere onto EAP and uh, also to uh, uh, to OpenShift, so the Red Hat runtimes on OpenShift. Um, yeah. So before I joined Red Hat, quickly, <laughs> quickly. Uh, so before I joined Red Hat, I joined Red Hat three and a half years ago. I've been working at IBM uh, for seventeen years, and also there, I've been doing uh, application migrations. Well, not to OpenShift, obviously, because that was before that time. But uh, yeah, so. That's what I've been doing. Oh, that's that's nice. I mean, and, and what we would like to know is, is how do you use the tools in the migrations? So first, I, I will I will explain a bit on, on how would do we normally do a migration. Uh, could you click next, please? OK, so um, there's a, a process that we normally follow that is discovering what does the customer have. And for that, we have a tool, which is migration analytics, that can help you discover the work the workloads that are running in your infrastructure. So you could say, okay, this is the sizing more or less on how many web logic servers do we have, how many top guys, how many uh, web spheres, etc. Et and then also we have an assessment for, for the organizational readiness, which is called ready to innovate, which is just to understand a bit of where you stand and, and the comparison with the, the average in, in, in your vertical. And we have Pathfinder that this is directly for applications to understand the application uh, uh, arena or environment and be able to select, okay, these are the applications that are the best ones to start with, and these are the applications that are going to be more complicated and, and so on. This is based on a survey that we have been doing in the field for quite some time with customers, helping them uh, assessing the migrations. And then is when when the real work starts, when you, you get your hands there and start uh, changing things in the code. And this is where migration toolkit for applications is for. So next, please. And uh, well, migration toolkit for application uh, used to be known as Red Hat Application Migration Toolkit or RAMT. Okay, the upstream project that is uh, known also by customers is called WindUp. Just in case you want to go and take a look at it or contribute. I mean, as usual, in Red Hat, we go open source, uh, edge to edge. And of course, this project is, is available to anyone in github.com slash windup. And uh, the tool is available for free in developers.redhat.com to download. Next, please. So Marcus, tell us a bit about the, the toolkit. Yeah, right. So um, since we typically use that uh, uh, in, in our uh, uh, customer engagements, when customers say, OK, I, I'm tasked with modernizing this application. I need to move off of a certain application server, or I have an EAP application that needs to move onto OpenShift, uh, on EAP on OpenShift. So what we do is uh, we use, obviously, the migration toolkit. Uh, so that's what we're here for. Um, and uh, uh, quickly, for, for people who haven't seen it, I encourage you to view the other, uh, to watch the other videos here uh, on the site um, because there's a full end to end demo. Um, but a quick introduction is it analyzes your code for uh, proprietary libraries, uh, uh, some dependencies on, on uh, a proprietary JE runtimes uh, uh, that might be in your code. Uh, analyzes for for cloud readiness. So would it run uh, uh, in a container if you stuffed it in a container? Um, and it would also help you with uh, migrations. Let's say from from EAP six to seven, uh, just as an example. And there's various uh, uh, various distributions of the tool that you can see here. And that's what I'd like to talk about. So how do we use them actually in in our day to day lives in projects? Yeah, that's what we want to know. Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, the thing is, uh, you would typically first start uh, with a web console because that is easy to install. Um, it's uh, um, it's available as a, as a you can simply unzip and run it. So it's it's an install in one minute. There's also a version available for uh, uh, for installing on OpenShift. And uh, so you can easily set up a VM or install it in an open shift in your namespace and make it available to your developers. So typically, you would go in and say, uh, OK, here, developers, come have a look. Uh, have a, You do a quick introduction. OK, this is what the tool looks like. And then uh, let your developers play with it, uh, uh, get, a, get a feeling for, for the reports, uh, get a feeling for the um, uh, uh, for the results it's presenting, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that is the, the typical starting point uh, uh, we see in projects. And it's also good for, for like uh, smaller engagements where you say, okay, I have like uh, 10 or 20 applications. Why is it not good for larger engagements? Well, from a technical perspective, you could, you could use it, but it gets a little cumbersome uh, to upload. Like, let's say you have 50 applications uh, that you need to modernize. Each application consists of, let's, let's say, one or two ear files, a couple of war files um, uh, that you need to analyze. So you would you would have to upload them via a web interface, and that can I mean, a developer likes to script. So <laughs> that's uh, what the uh, uh, the CLI distribution is for, and that is very straightforward. It generates the same results. So so there's the same engine in in all of these. Uh, there's no no difference uh, of what you get, and also the the look and feel. Everything is the same. Um, it's just a, a, a different way to uh, to call it. So as I have put an example here, um, it's it's very easy. Uh, it's very easy to script it uh, to use the parameters. And the typical use case of that is um, um, you have uh, developers put their uh, put their uh, deployable artifacts uh, somewhere in a in a directory, and then you would just have a script run through all those uh, directories, and then put the resulting HTML reports um, uh, in a certain directory, and you can put them easily onto uh, onto a simple web server like Apache uh, HTTP server, for example, for uh, for consumption. Or you can just keep them on, on your laptop if you want, but uh, developing is a collaborative effort. If I understood correctly, there's the, the web interface that you can run on your laptop or deploy on your OpenShift. Right, like you deploy like in a couple of minutes because it's a zip file and zip and go and, and you're ready to go. Exactly. Or if you want to script it, then you go for the command line interface version that can run for like a huge set of applications and generate the reports of each application. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Nice. And so uh, another use case for that, together with a Maven plugin, is uh, let's say you have a really huge application, and uh, you do, uh, you don't want to have one report and then have your developers go. No, uh, typically you would do uh, uh, you would have an iterative approach, um, agile approach. Um, and so if you want to uh, continuously evaluate how far you are, what what uh, what findings are still in there or what happens, uh, I've introduced some new ones, <laughs> happens to the best of us, then um, you can use either the Maven plugin during your build process or you could use the CLI. That's what many customers do, use the CLI in your, for example, Jenkins pipeline. Um, that would automatically an analyze uh, the code and then update, uh, give you updated reports every time you build something. So, Marcus, are you telling me that with the Maven plugin and the command line or the command line interface, you could embed the analysis in your CI CD pipelines and be able to continuously check the applications? Exactly, exactly. Oh, that's so, so cool. And that's what many customers do, especially if, if you have a complicated application. Um, you don't want to go through that process, even though it's small. You don't want to tell your developers, OK, now I have this artifact. Please put it in this directory, then rerun the uh, uh, rerun the CLI script that we just uh, uh, talked about. Uh, yeah. That would be an automated fashion, and you would always have your, uh, your updated reports. Nice. And last not least, and that's what we see uh, at, at customers. It's it's like 50-50. So uh, we have IDE plugins, as you mentioned in the beginning. Um, we have IDE plugins uh, uh, for like VS Code, Eclipse, um, and uh, 
So what, what they do is they highlight the report, uh, the, they highlight the findings directly in your code and give you some hints on what to do. Um, so similar, again, based on the same engine, um, uh, similar to what you get in the reports, but directly embedded in your uh, in your IDE, which is very cool. And I personally like it, uh, but it's like 50, it's, it's a matter of taste. Some developers will say, yeah, that's nice, but I'd rather, I'd rather, uh, um, have my clean development environment, and I will uh, I will just have the report next uh, next to my IDE side by side. And other developers will say, "No, that's neat. Uh, I want to have the issues highlighted in my uh, my IDE right away." So it's it's your obviously it's your program. Yeah, I mean, I mean we know that developers yeah. are normally like to have their own environment, their own choice, and their own way. So Absolutely. for the ones the ones that want to have it in line, they have the plugins, right? Exactly. Thanks. So nice. Okay, and one one advanced usage in in the spirit of uh, uh, sharing is caring. Uh, one thing that is often overlooked but is very powerful is you can uh, uh, you can modify and you can uh, create your own rules. So what is a rule? Um, it just can be as simple as you. Uh, I have an example here: an XML rule. You can also write the complicated rules in Java code inline. Um, there's a guide for that uh, in the documentation, uh, rules development guide. But it can be as simple as that. Uh, so um, you have already uh, you have already found uh, an issue a couple of times. You have documented, which is good practice that we recommend in our projects to document everything you do and find it because some other guy will come with an application that uh, uh, faces the same issue and you don't want them to reinvent the wheel and check out, okay, uh, I have to do this, I have to do that. No, uh, you want them to find what you have already done. Uh, so, and it's easy to, uh, um, uh, to add, for example, links here. In this example, uh, I just said, okay, um, check the wiki for an example in conjunction with our super framework that we're using internally, or when you use frameworks internally and you encounter a specific reference, um, you build a simple rule and say, okay, if you're using this framework, just go to this wiki page and it will, uh, will come up in the report go to this wiki page and this is uh, how you migrate if you're using this part of our internal framework, for example. So that's very easy, very straightforward, yet very powerful. This this got to save like a lot of time to people. You know, when, when you have a rule that you find an issue that is common because you're using like the same set of practices and then you write the solution to that and then you point the, your colleagues to that solution so they don't have to overthink it, but just apply it. Exactly, nice. exactly. Nice. Okay, so uh, let's do a quick demo. Let's see it in action. Yeah, so by the way, this is running on my laptop now, so no fancy, uh, no fancy server landscape in the background. As you can see, uh, this is on my running laptop. On, running yeah. on Linux, right? Yeah, right. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we work at Red Hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm running uh, Red Hat Linux on my yeah. laptop. I mean, but this is this is Java based, so it would run in a Mac or it run in Windows, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Perfect. And so um, I encourage you again to to watch the full demo. I just want to show you for, from a day in the life. What 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 do I do? So I I have these reports. They those have been generated either via the, uh, uh, web console that you see here or the reports. These reports look exactly the same if you generate them uh, via the CLI or the Maven plugin. There's no difference. Same report. Um, the only difference is the way, uh, how to, how, how you start the analysis. And so, uh, what, Developers typically do what developers typically do is uh, they will jump right into their code and see okay what did the tool find. Um, but uh, one thing I quickly want to highlight again, uh, watch the full video is uh, the the uh, uh, the tar um, the, the target runtime tags here, so I can see okay. Uh, um, these are uh, these are supported by EAP, for example, and these things uh, would not be supported by JWS, which is the Red Hat build of Tomcat. Um, so you can see maybe you find okay, there's only one 
red box and then you see okay if i if i change this uh, then i would be able to run it on on a tomcat instead of uh, having to run it on a full je stack so these are just just a hint um it's uh, it's quite a nice feature to see okay what would I have to change in terms of libraries or technologies uh, to make it runnable on a different runtime? Okay, developers, developers will dive right into, they will not really care about the dashboard. This is more like for development managers and, and uh, uh, application owners. Okay, so this is what, uh, 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 what a report looks like. That's the part I like for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. But developers will see, okay, now what did the tool find in my code? So um, you can dive right into it, and then uh, you will you will see. I will directly go into here's a by the way a a, a little more explanation. Okay, what did it find? And um, uh, some references. Uh, and these would these references would be they could point to your internal wiki, as I've just shown uh, uh, with your rule. Um, and I will go jump directly into the code and say, okay, now. This is what it has, what it has found, and now, sadly, there is no pixie dust. So your developers will have to use their brains. Well, obviously, you have hired them because they have brains and good ones at that. So, um, uh, yeah, as a developer, you will have to uh, you will have to look into it and and see. Okay, now uh, this is a suggestion. This is what the tool has found, and. Uh, um, now I can say, okay, I, I will change that according to the uh, uh, to the findings. But also, sometimes um, maybe you're using a certain framework, or you have uh, you have policies on how to apply different different patterns. Then you, as a developer, have to decide. Okay, this is what the tool said. Can I directly apply this, or would I have to probably refactor the code a bit? So um, this gives you very good hints, and and it says, okay, you cannot use this. Well, obviously, you cannot, for example, use a web logic uh, a web logic library or web logic uh, um, web logic class uh, that is proprietary if you're using it on EAP. Well, that's clear. That that's very obvious. But uh, uh, in uh, there. There might be there might be other changes where you have to think a bit. Okay, can I use that directly, or would I have to uh, uh, would I have to refactor my code a little bit more? So this is this is how how developers in the field would uh, directly dive into dive into their code and see. Okay, this these are the things that the tool has found, and um, yeah, you will still have to use your brain, but that's yeah, but what you're here it, for. <laughs> Let's say that um, in your experience, uh, this this is normally a, a apply. A, I mean, verify that it would work. Apply, rebuild, and retest. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, That's so most of the times, right? The other ones are exceptions. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, you would in your in your in your projects in your project you would build uh, uh, you would build your your target environment and probably on your first tries it wouldn't work and then you you would see okay uh, now let's let's analyze it let's analyze it um, and uh, see what the tool says uh, the thing is it should help you and it will help you with uh, identifying um, identifying things that will not work uh, uh, on your target runtime that will not work. Uh, um, uh, uh, in, from your code uh, uh, unchanged in a container platform, or it will cause problems. Uh, the trickier ones are the ones that work and just cause un unwanted behavior. <laughs> so uh, there's also a number of rules, uh, a huge number of rules that help you with uh, um, with containerization. And um, then you would uh, you would apply uh, apply the findings here. You would you would have to look. Okay, can I use that directly or are there limitations because my company policy says, uh, okay, uh, don't use this. Might be a suggestion from the tool, but maybe you're not allowed to use library X, Y, Z, and then you would have to come up with a with a different thing. That's that's a really good example. Thank you very much, Marcus. I think that uh, it is pretty clear how uh, you, the, the architects and consultants from Red Hat, use with the customers and developers the migration token for applications uh, to really perform the final steps of the migration to to open source platforms and open source products thank you very much marcus 
You're welcome. And I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And uh, there's a couple of takeaways from you that you can use in your projects and using the tool. I'm sure. I'm sure there will be. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.